Peter, thank you for joining us today. It's good to see you again. Good to see you, Jimmy. Peter, the Sprott name is synonymous with gold and silver. So before we dive into your various divisions, why don't we just start with a brief overview of Sprott and a brief history of the company? Sure. Eric started the company in 1981, so we're one of the longest standing investors in the sector. We originally built up as um, a private client asset manager, and the company was converted to a full fund company in, in 2000. And we built aggressively all through the 2000s to be who we are today. And you took over in 2010. Maybe you can just touch on how the company has really evolved since that time. Sure. It's continued to broaden our scope across the sector. Uh, so we introduced lending, we introduced private strategies, we introduced some more physical trusts. We just continue to get more global and cover mining in more, uh, more, more ways. And Peter, what are the various divisions at Sprout Inc. and what are the what's the AUM of each division? Well, the largest is exchange listed products, and we had uh, at last reporting date about 12.2 billion in that division. We have a managed equities division, which is your public equities, your public equity funds, and that's about two and a half billion. And we have private strategies, which are mostly funded by institutions, and that would be, um, depending on how you count them, somewhere between one and two billion. And then we have brokerage, which also has some private client assets, and it has about a billion of, uh, of uh, managed assets in that section. Peter, you have a physical trust product for gold, silver, platinum, and palladium, and you just announced a new one recently for uranium. Why don't you give us an overview of that new product? Sure. I think the acquisition of the management contract for uranium participation or UPC is a really important move for Sprott and we're, we're really happy to have made it. Uh, we've been a long time investor in the uranium sector, uh, specifically between 2000 and 2007. Um, I think that uranium went through a very tough time and is now poised for uh, bull market conditions. We think it's part of the green energy, energy solution. So it's great to be taking over this vehicle and modernizing it going forward. So we have big plans for UPC. Part of that is to uh, use our skills as an asset manager to market the um, Uranium Trust more aggressively. Part of it is a change in the structure of the product. What used to be a company is now converted to a trust. What that will do is it will allow us to assess and look at the market at all times on a daily basis. So our investors will be looking at it on a daily basis. They will get a daily nav and we will be looking on it, at it on a daily basis. We will be able to match buyers and sellers of uranium on a daily basis where the company had only been doing that occasionally in the past. And I think that's going to make a huge difference. It's going to make for a larger and more liquid trust if we have our way. It's going to make for a more active trust in, in the marketplace and hopefully providing greater transparency to investors in terms of setting a uranium price and, and, and quoting that price on a daily basis. So all of that together, um, we're really excited about. We are gonna be making an application to the New York Stock Exchange. We do think the much larger pool of investors resides in the US for this sector. And we thought, similar to our other physical trusts, we needed to bridge that gap and take it to our principal audience, which are US uh, investors. And have you started buying uranium yet? And how often will you be purchasing it? Well, as a matter of fact, we announced uh, yesterday that we, we had made our first purchase on our first day, 100,000 pounds. And uh, if that's any indication, I think you'll, you'll, you'll see that we'll be fairly active. Um, so uh, we look forward to reporting uh, again on a daily basis as we build the trust. Peter, another interesting component of this new product is the ATM feature. Maybe you can just touch on that. Yeah, I, I, I touched on it uh, briefly, but just in the daily market making, 
in order to make an efficient market in terms of raising capital, we believe that uh, computer-generated uh, automatic uh, purchase uh, program for investors is the most efficient way to go. So we run those ATMs on all our trusts, and what they do is they can issue units when the trust is trading at a premium to its underlying net asset value. And that can happen on fairly large scale. It happens under a shelf prospectus. Um, so it's, it's perfect for, we think, it's perfect for this product. So as you mentioned, Peter, the physical trust business is the largest component of Sprott, representing approximately $12 billion of $17 billion in total assets. Can you just explain how this business works and how you make money on it? Sure. It's pretty simple. Uh, our our, our uh, motto, our promise to investors is to provide uh, access and trust that they have full physical ownership of the metal. And so it, it started in delivering that premise, uh, making it liquid on exchange so that there's always a, a, a bid and ask in the appropriate zone. And then also providing investors with a lot of information on the markets. So the metal's there, it's 100% physically backed. And what we do is we charge um, some expenses back to the investor and a small management fee for managing that, that physical commodity. Peter, the Sprott business, it's not a royalty business per se, but it does share many of the same attributes or characteristics of a, of a royalty company. Why don't you just touch on some of those characteristics? Sure. Uh, well, I agree with you, uh, Jimmy. Um, our, our trusts are just that, physical. Our assets are sticky, like royalties are. Our margins are high on those assets, much like the margins of royalty companies. And our revenues are denominated in the commodity prices themselves. So if commodity prices move up and down, we have leverage to that both ways. So at the end of the day, our results, our EBIT is very similar to that of a royalty company. It's high margin EBIT stemming from the management of um, uh, commodities, in, in, in our case, mostly gold and silver. And I think our, our, our EBITs are, are similarly leveraged to the gold and silver business as royalty companies are. And you also pay a dividend? Yes, we do. We've uh, made that a commitment to investors from the from the onset. We've never reduced our dividend. We've only increased it, and that's a commitment that we make going forward. And one of the big benefits of a royalty company is the exploration upside. And I am I right to assume that you have this same sort of exposure through your active management portfolio? Yeah, we don't have quite the same exposure. As you say, royalty companies really do benefit uh, strongly from exploration. What we have is we have managed equity portfolios and managed private asset portfolios. And we like to think that if we do well, we start to leverage those assets through similar returns, but we do so through the valuation of their equities or those projects. And are there more flows going into the physical trust business or the active management business? I think it's true across the globe that the funds have been more focused. The funds flow has been more focused on physical trusts. Investors seem to prefer that. It, it's it's larger area. It's more, more liquid. It has less volatility. The, the dollars, the big dollars have not really returned to the equities, although you know, that's notwithstanding the performance in that sector. We we like how we've performed in the last two or three years, and we like the valuations of those equities. So I think it's time that it happens, but we can't push on a rope, and it'll happen after the results continue to get posted. But why do you think that is? 2020 was a very good year for precious metals and also for the equities, and these uh, gold companies, gold producers, are cash flowing gobs and gobs of money. Why aren't the generalists coming back to that sector the way they did back in 2010, 2011? I think the bar is a little bit higher than it was back then. So the bar for liquidity, the bar for generalists getting into a sector, it's still a fairly small sector. Totally agree that the results have never been better. The equities have never looked cheaper and the whole sector is really healthy now. 
And I, I think it's just a matter of time before incoming capital starts to lift those valuations. So um, I, I think it's just taken some time to get investors comfortable again that this isn't just some volatile sector that's based on um, you know more hope that actually the results are there now and, and they can confidently buy. Peter, one of your divisions is the active managed division, and that's also comprising the Tocqueville acquisition that you did in 2020. How is that going overall? And are you happy with the growth in the AUM associated with that division? Well, I think we're, we're extremely happy with having acquired Tocqueville. It's a hand in glove fit. We really like the way that our portfolio managers interact now as a team globally. And we've launched a couple of new products that have been very successful in terms of performance. So I think the system is really proving itself. I can't tell you how proud I am of the talent that exists across the company now. I, I couldn't have imagined 10 years ago that so many of the great managers in the mining sector would all sit under one roof like this. So we get a lot of benefit talking to John and Doug Grow and, um, understanding the sector better. Uh, I would say in terms of the assets, yes, we're reasonably happy with the way it's gone, but mostly from a performance perspective, to harken back to our last question, none of us are happy about not having quicker growth in the uh, mining equities, especially considering that they're performing so well. So I think it's um, we're all hopeful that we get into a higher uh, growth mode going forward and and I think the performance speaks for itself. So investors I would forecast are gonna to come to that sector over the next year. So in February of this year, we had a big move in the silver price and that was driven by Wall Street Bets, which is a Reddit community mm -hmm. formed in January of 2021. And an extension of that group is the Wall Street Silver Group. Does this group have, have a big impact on your inflows into your physical trust business? Yes, it has. I think um, they have importantly shone the spotlight on the importance of physical backing, and they've highlighted the sector as a whole as being one that has that similar characteristic to Bitcoin in that um, it, it, is, it is a protection from fiat currency. So th that, that flow from that group of investors was really important for us and I think important for the whole sector and profiling an asset that's physically scarce and that the commercial banks had been shorting. So it's it's helped our business and it's helped our trust. Peter, what percent of your client base would be institutional as opposed to retail? Historically, we've always had a strong retail um, client base ac across the sector. Um, that's continued to increase in size, but institutions started to join the firm as clients probably five years back, and institutional money is becoming much more important to us now. The split, I'm, I'm guessing at this, but it's it's roughly 70-30 or 75-25 in that range, and the institutions are now, I think, a, a substantial source of new funds. And given the move that we've seen in the price of gold and silver here in the past year, do you, are you getting more interest from the institutional side of the business? Are you getting more calls from hedge funds, family offices, pension funds? Yes. Endowments um, are probably the largest of institutional investors, and they're increasingly allocating to gold and precious metals and, and other metals as well as a an inflation protection type of asset and a risk uh, protection type of asset. So that endowment and pension money is really starting to show up. And as well, family offices have the same mentality. They have enough liquidity where they can put some money aside as an insurance asset. And they've been buying gold for the last uh, three to six years, actually. Peter, Sprott has acquired many companies over the last few years, the Central Gold Trust, the Central Fund of Canada, and also more recently, Tocqueville. Are you gonna continue on with this acquisition strategy? Yes, 
we show no signs of slowing down. We will continue to look across the globe for products and teams that fit with our client base and also where we see that there's money to be made, hopefully in a contrarian fashion. And if, if we find the right uh, team or the right set of clients or the right product, we will definitely be looking at making more acquisitions. In April of this year, Sprott acquired the royalty on the Red Mountain project from Seabridge for $18 million. Are you going to continue acquiring royalty and streaming agreements? In our uh, private institutional business we have both project lending and we occasionally buy streams and royalties so those to be to be clear those are managed funds and we will continue to grow those businesses so we will be out there looking for opportunistic purchases of uh, streams it's more associated with project financing for us than it is in competition with the royalty companies so we like to think of ourselves as a good partner in that sector And Peter, where do you see Sprott going in five years? You currently have $17 billion in AUM. Where would you like to be in five years? Well, we are really busy right now and we're taking on new funds. We just landed the UPC acquisition, which is another 630 million. Um, I see no signs of the slowing in that growth. Uh, I think that the sector has been underappreciated for a long time. There's lots of capital that needs to be invested both at the corporate level and i think as uh, fiat uh, currencies continue to remain a bit suspect due to rapid money supply growth uh, lots of different investors are hedging now and putting some money aside in these sectors so that that's just maybe in the third inning it's pretty early days yet and we've got a lot of growth to do over the next five years so i see it going and growing into a much bigger company. And how should investors look at Sprott Inc? Is it a asset manager, a precious metals company, or a royalty company? It's a hybrid, to be clear. And I think they should look at it as a one-stop shop for the minerals and mining sector. Uh, we have less volatility than mining companies do because we have such a broad portfolio and we have so many revenues and, and profits that come from low volatility management businesses. So it's a great way to participate in the sector as a whole. And as you mentioned, we pay a strong dividend. And um, I, I think if we could appeal to investors as a one-stop look into the sector, that's what we'd like to do. Peter, that was a great overview of Sprott Inc. What can, as we wrap up, what can investors expect in terms of news flow in the coming weeks and months? Well, we have our quarter, um, which comes out at the beginning of August, and we'll update our AUMs and funds flows and, and financial performance. And I think that investors will be able to keep track of our uranium purchases um, as we report those publicly. Uh, same thing goes for the managed trusts and the other sectors. And then we constantly have investments. Uh, we constantly have investment news coming out um, on on our various uh, funds and, and investments that we're making. So you can also follow us along through that that news. That's great. Well, Peter, I want to thank you for that overview. And to all of our viewers, if any of your questions were not asked please send us an email to info at floorstreetcapital.com and we'll make sure Peter or another member of his team responds. Or if you would like some research on Sprott, send us an email and we'll send that along. I would also encourage you to check out the Sprott.com website. It has a wealth of information on there about gold, silver, and now the new uranium product. And with that, once again, Peter, thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Have a good day.